In 2005, the Defense Department's experimental research wing, DARPA, created a program to make the next generation of prosthetic arms for returning soldiers who had lost limbs in combat. One contract went to DECA Research, headed by Dean Kamen, inventor of the Segway. Inspired by the sophisticated prosthesis in Star Wars, Kamen set out to make what he calls his Luke arm. I spent a couple of weeks traveling around the country visiting people that they recommended I talk to so that I could get an assessment of what is the current state of the art before we agreed that we would try to go do this. If you looked at the relative capability of lower limb prosthetics versus upper limb, it's, you know, upper limbs are the Flintstones and the lower limbs are in the 21st century. Chuck Hildreth is one of several DECA right, test pilots. Amputees who help Cayman's engineers optimize the Luke arm before it goes to official clinical trials. Cayman's team decided that the arm needed four main characteristics. It had to be modular, lightweight, agile, and it had to support customizable controls. The arm that we've made is modular, so we can actually uh, take pieces of the arm to fit all three levels of those amputation. amputations. DECA engineers built the arm in independent sections so it could be customized for any amputee. From the hand, they can add a forearm, an elbow, and even a shoulder socket. Works better when you plug it in. Yeah. <laughs> Hildreth lost both of his arms when he was electrocuted 26 years ago. Today, he's testing a Luke arm on his left side, where he still has a short residuum. What does it feel like wearing that? It's uh, kind of liberating. <laughs> I mean, I've been without an arm for 26 years. Weight is another big challenge in making a prosthetic practical. You have to make an arm that you know, is atomically correct. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you have to make it you know, weigh as little as possible. Engineers modeled the Luke arm on an average female arm. Right. This particular arm actually weighs less than eight pounds. That's including all the electronics and the battery. The Luke arm also had to be agile enough to do exactly what the human arm can do. Uh, so far, the test pilots, within a matter of you know five to ten hours of practice, can can operate you know operate the arm such that they can you know pick up small objects or, or stack cups. Um, they can. Uh, eat, eat grapes. The arm is able to handle these complex tasks because of the complexity of the electronics inside. The technology like lithium batteries got within reach. In the last few years, processing became uh, ubiquitous and the size and power consumption of processors got within reach of doing this. There's actually like 12 microprocessors in the arm. These sophisticated electronics also allow sensory feedback. We have a, a small sensor in the thumb, sends a signal to one of the microprocessors, which then goes to a small vibrating motor. Oh, wow. The more pressure it intends. The harder they grip, the uh, higher the frequency the vibration becomes. So it gives them direct feedback. It's <laughs> gripping. <laughs> Lots of practice. Good grip strength. <laughs> it does have a good grip strength. The electronics support a variety of inputs. Mm -hmm. Depending on the user, the arm can be controlled by nerves, muscles, or even foot pedals. Oh, how cool. And if I push on my little toe, it goes down. And then I have a myosite up here, I switch. Oh, modes. yeah, with your muscles. So That's now, cool. when I push on the ball of my foot, it rotates the wrist. Push on the outside, it rotates. The next step could be a take-home clinical trial where users like Chuck subject the arm to their everyday routines. Certainly we hope within the next, if we can follow the program in the next years, we can actually have a commercially available arm. I've been able to do stuff with this that I haven't, seriously haven't done in 26 years. Like what? Uh, pick up a banana, peel a banana and eat it without it squishing it. And the payback we get is when somebody like Chuck says, I fed myself. 
for the first time in 26 years. That's why we build medical products. I, I can't wait to get one of these in a real environment, home environment. Yeah. But actually, actually, my wife can't either. Yeah. She's going, oh yeah, I got lots of stuff for you to do. <laughs> <laughs>